G'day everyone, and welcome to another video. I'm Smokescreen, and today I'll be bringing you a video on some of the daily races that I did this week. Well, I suppose they're last week's races, but nevertheless, you get a video now. So you just saw before the uh, races this week. Actually, I'll talk about them in a second. Just have a, have a quick look at the times there. So the new McLaren F1, you'll see a video on that later where I give that a go, but that's dominating the leaderboards at the moment. I do apologise for the blurry picture on that as well. I tried to pause the footage during editing and it just ruined the quality, so sorry about that. Or make sure I don't make similar mistakes in the future. But anyway, uh, this is my qualifying lap at the moment. So just have a look at that while I just talk about the races this week. So we got three, as usual, and they change weekly in Gran Turismo Sport, which is the game I'm showing you here, in case you didn't get that from the title. Uh, but anyway, so there's race A, B, and C. Race A this week is Maggiore Center, which is in N100, a specially provided car. Uh, we got race B, which is Nürburgring Nordschleife, sorry, and that's in the Mitsubishi Lancer. Uh, and then race C, which is the one here that I'm doing qualifying for, is Mount Panorama in Bathurst, Australia. My home country, very proud, in Group 3. So the car here is the Supra, the Toyota Supra GP racing concept. What a machine this is. But I don't seem to be doing it justice here with this lap. As you can see, I'm making a couple of mistakes. And <laughs> believe it or not, this is the best lap that I managed to do. So uh, I said it in the previous video where I just discussed what the channel was going to be. Have a look at that. Uh, I'll try and link it, I suppose, if I work out how to do it at the end. But um, I did discuss in there that I'm not a professional. I'm very new, so more so this is the, the videos you're going to see uh, natural progression of my skills also Bathurst isn't very uh, isn't very easy so that's my racing excuse but you see here we're coming down Conrod straight and we're on the 130 mark so we want to get before we want to get at least very least under two minutes ten which like I did in my previous record you can see on the screen there but um, yeah, so that's it. So Bathurst, first built in 1938, uh, the current variation used in 1987, so the earliest tracks aren't, or well, the, the tracks developed in the, a very long time ago, <laughs> let's say, have gone under many redevelopments, Bathurst being one of them, because of course, like, accidents and such. So, um, just finished the lap there with 205.8 and then this was the lap that immediately proceed uh, immediately proceeded it sorry uh, you can see the split times here on 1.1 seconds up through the mountain section there which the super is very strong at just get a touch of oversteer on the exit there but we're all good coming down Conrod again with 1.3 seconds up so we're on track for a 2 minute 4.5 so we come down to the chase here turns 20 21 and 22 but coming through turn 21, it just twitches a bit and I ended up on the grass. So that really threw away that lap, threw it in the bin. Not even the yellow lid bin, just the just the waste. Don't want to see any remnants of that again. So that ruined that lap there. And just to top it all off, I go deep into the last corner. And at this point here, I looked at the time. So I have two and a half minutes to set a lap so I've just instead of going around again or restarting which I probably should have done in hindsight we decide to go back up the bottom part of Conrod and we uh, chuck a J turn as you'll see there so my goal here was to just get a better run onto pit straight there hopefully get a good lap in ideally better than the 205.8 that you see there so Let's retry that, so braking just before the 50, which evidently is too late as I go slightly deep again. But not to worry, I just go with it because I don't have time to do all that again. And really, to be fair, I don't really have time to complete the lap, but we'll see, we'll see what happens here. So we just go into the first turn, but we decide to skip ahead here as it just twitches out again in turn two and I end up in the wall. So that was a lap that didn't go so well but we stick with the 205.8 which puts us fourth in this grid so that's not too bad I'll take it but it's definitely not going to be a sustainable pace for the long term of me racing 
here. It's just that I'm low rated at the moment, just because I've only just started. Still in the first five races, in fact. And actually, if I recall correctly, this is the very first online race that I did with my new account uh, for M Smokescreen. Of course, I do have a personal account that I am much uh, further into the game, but I'm not going to share that one with you. As we just start the race here, so we've got a bit of a gap to the beetle, just a uh, bit of a gap to the beetle up ahead, sorry. And uh, we managed to catch that up in turn one now. So we're just heading up the mountain straight now, behind the beetle. So we're in the slipstream of the beetle, firmly in the slipstream actually, about three tenths behind. And we're catching up to him. And in the braking zone, we just look up the inside, but we're really not going to get the job done there at the moment. But the beetle is quite slow as he goes wide. And now turn two there, Griffin's mount does have a negative camber if you go too wide. So <laughs> you'll be really on the back foot if you keep going wide consistently into turn two. Just as we come up towards the mountain section now, so this is a very difficult section. You've got to turn in really much earlier than you just saw me turn in there to get the best run. Uh, so these just shallow corners here, just following on from one another, it is so close to flat out. You can get the first one flat out, but not this one that I just went through there as the car just goes over a bit of a crest. As we come down to the S's now, very difficult section this. So we just come there a bit, we're a bit slow, the beetle gains a bit of ground but ends up going wide. So I want to try and pass him here but I'm not going to quite get it done as he just returns to the racing line. And I end up giving him a bit of a punt and the Mustang just shoots through like a bullet. Now frankly I'm really surprised he managed to get that pulled up just before Forrest's elbow there. But he did, he did earn himself a penalty so I'm not too sure what happened behind there, whether he... Uh, uh, rode the wall or <laughs> punted someone or uh, I don't know I don't know but we're heading down Cod Rod now so uh, we're just behind the Mustang now in the slipstream not going to quite pass him on brake and Mustang very good brakes but the new McLaren there just goes very very wide and I, I was worried about him collecting the Mustang and me having some trouble as we just go around the outside of him now into turn 23 Murray's corner but yeah, I was just worried about the um, uh, massive accident that could have happened when the McLaren re-entered. But nevertheless, so we up the straight here. I didn't have a quick look at the tyre wear at the moment. And it's very, very slight. But the front is slightly more worn than the rear. So you'll see here that I just changed brake bias from negative 3 to 1. Which just places a little bit more force on the rear tyres. But um, we skip ahead to the S's of the same lap, which is where trail braking is really how you get the best lap times. Of course, me not doing it too well. So that rear bias just really throws the car, uh, really throws the rear, sorry, of the car around as you go through the corners. So I was really not happy with rear bias. So I just was really tentative through the, f uh, not the final turn, Forest Elbow there, turn 18 and 19. Well, well turn 19 coming up now but we just flicked the bias back to negative two. It's so not quite as strong as we had before. And being the noob I am, you ready? I accidentally turned on TCS, and what do I do with it? I leave it on, so that's quite nooby if, you, if um, that's not too offensive to any viewers there, but I just leave it on because I just wanted to concentrate on the racing. Even though the TCS evidently didn't help me as we just get a bit of a... Uh, bit of a um, fishtailing coming out of turn one. So just fast fast forward up the straight here. So this is the inlet now, lap five, but of course an inlet could be lap four, but I'm opting to do the longer stint than the shorter stint as we have an odd number of laps as we go horribly wide into turn, uh, sorry, into turn four. But yeah, uh, back on strategy. So this race, nine laps, you have medium tyres to use, so the it's optimal to do the one stop, but odd number of laps means you can't do it exactly halfway, as they'll need to be pitting right now as we speak. And there's no pit lane up on top of the mountain, so that's why we have to do the split strategy. But we just received a bit of a punt coming down towards turn 13. That Mustang again, he comes through, he really likes uh, taking opportunities. Of course, he uh, made that opportunity arise himself but he's got 5.7 seconds of penalties now so I'm not too concerned about him beating me but 
Needless to say, we've had a shocking in-lap, and you really need to have a good in-lap. As we just come down towards the chase here, go up the inside of the Mustang, and I was really worried that I had forced it off, but I didn't. I was quite happy with that move there. But the Beetle sitting on the track, he served a penalty, he was ghosted, and I thought, I'll, I'll just go round him, but won't worry too much. And he ended up coming out of the ghost, so I just went into the back of him, and it really, really rattled me. So the Mustang does overhaul me in the pits as we change to a new set of medium tyres. So uh, we do five laps, then four laps, both medium tyres, it gets you to the end. A little bit of fuel saving, just because if you fuel save, you spend less time in the pits, refueling. So that's why it's good to fuel save. Now the Supra is very, very akin to fuel saving, as the uh, optimum way of driving is shifting very early, just because it just it really gets the most oomph from the very low end of the rev, so you save fuel and go faster, so Supra, very good choice around here. So we just fast forward very quickly through the final lap. I do apologise if you get dizzy, I will fix problems in production later, or as, as I make videos and receive comments of how I can make videos better, I will look at just making sure I don't put, you know, epileptic moments into my videos. So we just overhauled a back marker there, goes to back marker, very good. As we come towards the line, we, did, we do serve a penalty, but we're like five seconds ahead. We really didn't need to, but I just thought it looks bad in the lobby if you finish with the penalty, as the guy behind me did, that, that Mustang. He didn't serve his penalties, which he probably should have, to be fair. So there are the final standings there. We did get beaten by an AMG, so oh, sorry about that. Paper's fallen everywhere, if you did hear that. But anyway, that's that's the grid there. So we finished second. I'll t I'll take it. You know, it wasn't a fantastic race, but you know what? Whatever. I'll take what I can get. But there probably wasn't really a chance of getting first, to be honest. So there we are. Very happy with second place. So if you want to have a look at the standings again, there they are. So um, yeah, have a have a look at them. Put a nice message there. Just very generic message because I'm very cringy apparently so that was that race we'll just flick ahead to the next one now so here we are this is race B for this week the Lancer on Nürburgring Nordschleife so you just come into me doing my qualifying and immediately having a terrible mistake Sliding across the grass, really shocking. Just really terrible piece of driving there. As we finish up, Adenauer Forst, as it's known. Please excuse my horrid pronunciation of track sections, just because Australian and other accents don't get along too well. Uh, which is extremely like me in this car and this track, not getting on well at all. As we just go off again and getting a five second penalty, so really not, uh, really not optimal strategy to be cutting corners, going wide, all over the grass, getting penalties, it's really not what you want in qualifying. But we come up to the end here, we ended up serving a bit of the penalty there, so that tells me we're going a bit slow through that section there. And not that it matters, because we're slow through the entire section known as the Nürburgring, we also cut that final corner there, so we get a bit more of a penalty there. But but ultimately, we serve the penalty, come across the line with an 8.36, so that's really, it's really not a great lap time, to be honest. The top 10, uh, like, 7 minutes 58, like, we're really not good. So we entered the race now, now we're really pressed for time, if you can have a look. We've got uh, 6 minutes showing up before the race, and I've got to get around the entire uh, Nord Nordschleife loop now. So we're just having a quick look at some of the mistakes, so we go very deep into that uh, Adenauer Force before, which we did in the previous lap, and then we go a bit wide into that turn there, not not sure, Met Metzgesfeld, just having a look at the name of that section there, uh, getting ourselves a penalty. We also now go wide into Bergwerk, so it's really, it's just a shock and lap once again. So at this point I was looking at the time, I got four minutes to do half a lap, and you'll see here, just I didn't have enough time. So we were stuck with the 8.36, but I wasn't too confident that it was going to be a quicker lap anyway. So we're just entering the race now. So the Mitsubishi Lancer, it's N300, 
So uh, a car class ranging from 250 to 350 horsepower, if I recall correctly. I mean, it's a good car. I think it's all-wheel drive. Not too sure. I didn't really check, to be honest. Probably shouldn't say stuff I didn't check. But here we go. It's a one-make race. So everyone is in the Lancer here. So And uh, it's all balance. So no one's at a specific advantage. No tuning allowed in this daily race. You very rarely see races where tuning is allowed. Anyway, so we start the race now. We're in sixth of uh, sixth of eleven, so not too many people, as of course the maximum number of participants in a race is twenty. So this this particular one here isn't very full, not very popular either, all week or at this particular time slot I got. So before we even cross the line, I managed to punt the Jap ahead of me and get an SR flash down. So I wanted to go up the inside there, but it just wasn't quite going fast enough because it's a lot sharper than it appears. So just coming down towards turn one now, I do look up the inside to shove him out of the way. It was really not great. So um, the reason I did that is because the main strategy on the um, Nordschleife here, because it's so narrow, you really just have to go for any gap. Well, actually, that's not quite accurate. You just have to go for gaps if it's safe to do so. Other, otherwise, you just wait for mistakes, which the this guy here decides to make for me. So that's good. I'm up into fifth now. As the group ahead of me ver fighting like side to side, go up smashing each other off the track, and the South Korean manages to earn himself a 0.6 second penalty. So penalties is really not what you want. But here we go, side by side, down the uh, first of the, I suppose, first of the straights. But I managed to pick up Slipstream from the E46 guy. I think we'll see a bit of him later in the race. But we managed to overhaul into fourth, so it's a pretty good return from the first couple of corners. So we just head around towards this fast straight now. We just skip ahead a bit. As you'll see here, that section of the track is just... It's a really difficult corner to get right, just because it's uh, a slight left at top speed over a crest. The car goes very, very light, so you just got to really finesse it, really dance it through that uh, corner there. And I, ended, I was a bit too eager and ended up going too early. But anyway, so we're back in sixth, but everyone in front is a penalty. Well, at least the first two people in front of me have penalties. So that's a good sign at the moment. We're managed to managing to stick with the people up in front of me as there's a bit of fighting and I get distracted. Go deep. You'd swear it's the same clip from qualifying. I'm really not having a good time with that corner there. Haven't managed to do it correctly. Or any of the three times that I've done it so far. Where, uh, uh, three times that I've done it so far this week has come up in the past. But haven't done it correctly this time. So we're just heading towards the series of sharp corners here. So this is where I messed it up in the last qualifying lap. So there I am on the right on my qualifying lap, getting it wrong. So that's the E46 guy as we pass another guy who's spun off the track, just forgotten to turn, you know, simple stuff. As we head around towards the first hairpin, he's very wide, and I, I wanted to go up the inside, but I didn't quite slow down enough to allow that to happen, so I ended up with... Uh, he ended up going off the track. Well, I shoved him, and he ended up going off the track, and I earned myself a penalty. I just let him go back past, because that was really an unfair move. And he goes... He goes wide as I let him pass, and I decide that that is fair game, and I decide to go past. Again, as he tail swipes me, going into the very tight hairpin. We had another car on the outside there, but... Look, I was on the racing line, and he was kind of going around the outside. I think I had right of way. Do let me know down in the comments if you think that that was an unfair move from me, pushing him off the track. Not that I did it on purpose, because, to be honest, I didn't really know he was there. But, you know, if, if it was me in that position, I would not want to go on the outside there, as it's very, very tight, and these cars are quite... not so much slidey, but kind of... Like, they don't grip, but they're not slidey. I, I don't know, it, it's weird to explain, but... Anyway, I wasn't getting through there. But we come through the top straight here, so we're leading towards the double hairpins, the second of which is the carousel. So we've done the first one now, so we're heading towards the carousel now. And E... Uh, E46, sorry. Couldn't quite see his name there. Um, E46, he misses the carousel, ends up going over the top of it, which really slows you down through there. As if you were to take... 
the non-carousel line, you'd be stuck around 60Ks, but if you can go through the carousel, the banking helps you get it up to 70 and over, from my experiences anyway. So we're just coming through this section now, the uh, really, really shallow S's. So we, at this point, I was behind E46 here. I did have a bit of a penalty, and as did he. And I just wanted to stay through through that twisty section in hopes to slipstream here. So just have a look at the gap above the flag next to my name on the leaderboard. So I get a bit of run out of that turn just before the straight, which catches up the first... Ca which caught up those few tenths just before slipstream range, but I slipstream him down the straight, but end up going up the inside. Now that was a really stupid move, like that was just dumb. And look, I earned myself another penalty, so that was very well deserved, that one. I end up punting him into the final corner, but that's it. So I got fifth at the moment, so I just slow down to serve the penalty, and I just don't get it quite right, and end up getting overhauled by the guy who was just behind me, so I end up coming home in sixth. So that really just wasn't a great race. Like it, it's fun. The Nurburg, uh, the Nurburgring is, it promotes good racing. But when you do get towards the end, a little bit eager, you know, you end up making stupid decisions, and that's what I did. Ended up losing a couple of positions. Also didn't help that I don't know how to serve penalties, evidently. But we come home in six. That's not too bad. As we did have the ten on the car. So, uh, the number that the daily race gives you is kind of your predicted position. It's based on your driver rating. Now, I'm E at the moment, but that's because I've only just started. So, I, I was predicted 10th. So, that's it there. So, we're just going to race A now. Now, this is very very first lap that I ever did this week it, this, this combination has come up before and I did do it I have done this combination previously as it's come up but this is the first time I've done it this week as it's come up so this is the very first lap I was going to show you here just to show you how I don't know I suppose how I tackle my first lap I can tell you it's not great but we'll, we'll go ahead with it anyway so we just come around towards the first turn here in in Maggiore Centre, this is, so the middle part of the GP circuit. Of course, when you're on the GP, you turn left here. There's a little tiny bit more straight, and you go left, down towards the complex turn 5 of the GP. And then you come through the S's and end up right here, about halfway through the GP lap. But this is the back straight, so this, this part, there is a couple of turns, but it's really, it's flat out in this car, in 100. It's the Fiat 500 from the 1960s, so very slow, really puttering up the hill in fifth gear there, really surprised that it has fifth gear in the first place, but I break for the final turn, come round, I do turn the wheel a bit too much, but, you know, it's it's the first lap, cut me some slack, P please, please just cut me some slack. So we just come across the line now, and the lap time, it's quite average, so we come across with a 2097. So, I'll show you where that puts me in the grid in the next video. So, you'll have to look at the next one if you're so, so interested in Fiat 500s on Maggiore Center on Gran Turismo Sport to see some aspiring YouTuber to get some position that he aspires also to do. But, that's the end. So, you'll have to see in the next video to see where that one puts me. But, I do thank you for listening to me waffle on uncontrollably about some races that I did on a video game because I'm lonely but we'll just have to see the next race so of course I'll open up the next video with that race if you're interested take a look it'll go up in the next I want to say next few days but it's really could be the next in the next week when I find the motivation to do it but that's it so that's the first video of actual racing now Please don't berate me in the comments. I know I'm not that great at the game, but I will get better. I will practice some more. Bathurst itself is not a particularly easy circuit to master, so just bear with me. Uh, do Also, do let me know down in the comments. You can uh, post your comment in the comment section. Really good at stating the obvious here. Or you can DM me on the Instagram, r4mSmokeScreen nice and creative 
So that's linked up in the banner of the channel. Like if you click like my name underneath the video here and go to my channel, it should be linked up in the banner where it says smoke screen with the kind of fuzzy static picture. So have a look at that. You can message me on there. But what I'm trying to say is just let me know anywhere you like uh, some things that I can do to make my videos better. Now, I was aware of a couple of issues in this video, like the uh, downgraded image quality when I paused it at the start, showing the daily races and showing the top 10 stars for Bathurst. And I was aware of the very abrupt transition from me coming out of the pits into fast forward in my final lap. I knew that was very abrupt and I'm... I do apologize if you didn't like that, but I will be looking in the future to make my videos better. So do let me know if there's anything I can do. But that's all from me. Thank you very much. If you did enjoy, please do consider subscribing. Also consider hitting the like bu button if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, just don't watch the videos. Like that, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, click the bell. I'm not going to tell you that too much, but if you do want to be notified of every video that I upload, click the bell and it'll come up in your subscription box. So, that's it. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.